In this week's full length painting tutorial, I'll show you how to paint this slipper orchid with easy to follow steps. I know how much you like painting flowers, so let's get straight into it. Okay, as you can see, I've done a simple outline here and I traced down my slipper orchid outline for my drawing here. But you can, of course, draw it freehand if you want to. I provide you with a free traceable and a photograph to work from and I'll tell you how you can obtain them later on. So materials, this is the paper that I'm using, it's Etcher and it's 100% cotton paper and it's cold press which has a texture. Now today I'm going to be using my paints from A Gallo. I know that not everybody has these paints because they are quite difficult to come by but I'll be giving you alternative colours as we work through the tutorial so be sure to stick around and remember to use the colours that you have. Azo Yellow Gold, Fig Green, Aranthione, Opera Rose, Ruby Red, Quinacridone Red Gold are A Gallo. We have Burnt Umber by May Marie Blue here, and we also have two colours from Windsor and Newton, which are Perilene Violet and Neutral Tint. Now remember, I'm always going to give you alternative colours to use. I just wanted to use these colours that I had from A Gallo. I haven't really had the chance to use them, but like I said, I'll tell you alternatives as we work through. I'm using my number five brown, Round Rush by Da Vinci, my number two spotter by uh, Jackson's and just a few other brushes that I have here on hand. This is a really old spotter that I use to mix my paints, a flat synthetic brush and uh, just this really old um, number one sized uh, round brush here. I have a clean glass of water and some kitchen paper and my little palette here. This is from Etcher and I will link all the materials that I'm going to be using underneath this video. Okay, so remember, when we're working in watercolour, we work from light to dark in fine layers as we work through. You'll see me here adding a puddle of water to the middle section of my palette and this is really, really important and I'll explain why as I work through. Okay, so to begin with, I have a really watery mix of neutral tint. If you don't have neutral tint, you could use something like uh, Mars Black or a really, really pale grey tone. So to start with, I'm working wet on wet, which means that I'm going to be applying the water where I want to drop the paint in. This is going all over the top petal like this, using my number 5 brush. Using the little puddle of water that I have in the centre of my palette means I'm not dipping my brush into the water jar which floods the brush with water and it can mean that there's too much water on the brush which makes application really difficult. You'll see me now dropping in the neutral tint where I've applied that water so that it just lands exactly where we want it to go. This paint needs to go right up to the pencil line on the upper part of this petal, but not where the base, not near the base, because we want that to be that yellowy green tone. So the fake green colour that I'm using here, you could use something like a lemon yellow or a cadmium, uh, cadmium lemon would do just as well if you don't have leaf green, sorry, fig green, but if you have fig green, then by all means, go ahead and use it. So this will be dropped at the base of this petal here. So I've had these paints from A Gallo for a good few months and I really have only done one tutorial with them because I know that not many people have the chance to um, grab hold of them because they are made in small batches but they are really really beautiful paints and um, I think they have sort of restocks a few times a year but sell out very very quickly. They sell out so quickly but um, I know that quite a few people have them. I know that certainly uh, people on our Facebook group have them. So I thought I would just demonstrate using them today. But as I always say, please use the colors that you have within your own set. You don't have to go out and buy the ones that I'm using. So I'm just taking this color over in a really, really light wash. So that means I have plenty of water on my brush and I'm just taking this all over the areas you can see here. This will act as our base colour and remember we're going to be building on these colours as we work through. I'm just drawing around with paint this little highlight that we need to sort of keep out of just to let, just to remind me that I don't want to paint there. So I'm just working around that. I'm also going to be taking this colour down the stem as well. 
So remember that watercolour always goes through what's known as the ugly duckling phase. So that means that as we work through our watercolour painting, it can look really, really wrong, but um, it's all part of the process. So if you are new to watercolour painting, I highly recommend that you watch this video all the way through so that you can see how we get past that tricky phase to watch our paintings come to life. Everything's completely dry now and I've cleaned up my palette and we want to mix this kind of peachy tone here. So for this, I'm going to be using um, a mixture of a baby, uh, this is called Opera Rose, but it's more like a Quinacridone Magenta. So if you don't have this colour by A. Gallo, use Quinacridone Magenta. And I'm mixing in with it a tiny bit of the um, Azo Yellow Gold. So again, that would be something like a Cadmium Yellow. The other colours that you can see are Quinacridone Red Gold at the top there. And the other one is mixed with Arancioni which is kind of a similar colour to maybe a Windsor yellow or perhaps an Indian yellow. I'm not too fussy about the colours here, just want the colours to be sort of similar and you can see the light pink tone that I've got here. Notice how because we're glazing over the colour with another colour, we can still see the underlying colour right underneath. And I'm applying this where we need to see that lightest paley peach tone within the petals. I said at the start of this painting tutorial that it's suitable for all levels. Now the reason I've said that is because we have a learn to paint as you paint approach here on our channel, which means that I show you every step of the way so that you can see exactly what I do and it really does help you learn how to paint. And I also mentioned that we have a free line drawing and trace down um, outline for you to have if you are interested in tracing it down. And you can get this now in three separate ways. The first way is to head over to our Facebook group and I'll link it in the description box underneath this video. So if you join us there, you can post up your finished paintings from our tutorials and have some feedback from both me and our other wonderful members. So I'll link that in the description box below where you can have our free trace down drawing and our um, outline if you want that. I'm also going to put the outline, the traceable outline right at the end of this video. So do stay there. But not only that, I'm going to put it on our community tab right here on YouTube. So all you need to do is go over to our community tab, scroll down and find the outline that you want, do a freeze frame and print it off that way. So now that art layers are dry, you can see I'm adding another layer of this Azo Yellow Gold, just to add some depth and form as I work through. So now that the front, the first layer is dry, I'm adding another layer of fig green over the existing wash. So we have our template in place, which makes it now super easy to add another layer of paint over the top. Notice how I'm leaving some gaps here and there to give it a little bit of form. Now I'm mixing perylene violet and you can see how I'm applying it using the tip of my number five round brush here. In the past, you've heard me talk about spotter brushes if you're familiar with my channel. If you have spotter brushes, then do continue to use them. The reason that I'm not using them for my tutorials at the moment is they have gone a little bit blunt and I do need to replace them. So for now, I'm using this brush here and this suits me really well because it's actually quite a short brush and it means that I'm not banging it on my camera every five minutes. So I'm now dropping in this, um, this kind of burgundy tone. This is Perilene and Violet from Windsor and Newton. Um, again, if you don't have this color, you could maybe use something like a carmine mixed with a little bit of purple to create this burgundy shade that I'm using here. Um, added it to the bottom part of the bottom petal, bottom part of that petal, you'll notice that it was a little bit damp, which is why those little dots are splurging a little bit. And I'm using my flat brush there just to soften any edges with just plain water. Here we have ruby red and also the quinacridone red gold and a tiny bit of the Aranth, as it Arancioni, I'm <laughs> speaking Spanish instead of um, Italian. I lived in Spain for a little while, so we would say Arancioni in Spain, but I think it's probably Arancioni, um, which is a kind of yellow color. And 
as you can see, I worked wet and wet there, applying that water once again, just where I want to drop the paint in like this. This time I'm using the kind of wiggly motion and as I hit the base of that petal there, you can see how the paint is slightly lighter with a little bit uh, more water so that I'm working around that central vein. As I hit the top, working wet and dry, this time using the tip of my brush to apply it right up to the pencil line there. Going back to the drawing um, that we initially showed you, you'll notice that the drawing had no sketchy edges. When I supply you with the trace down drawing, you can either do it, you can do it one of two ways. You can either trace down from the photograph that I supply you with, which is exactly the same photograph that we have in screen here, or you can, if you prefer, some people actually like to trace it from a line drawing, and we now have a digital copy of the line drawing for you too. So it's up to you, or of course you can draw it freehand, but just for speed. I think many people like to just get on with the, the painting element, as do I. So I'm dipping between these two colours. We have ruby red, which is very similar to a crimson colour, and also um, quinacridone red gold, which I would say is very similar to maybe burnt sienna. Notice how I'm applying this wet on dry, just using the tip of my brush to follow that vein right the way through. Using the water in my middle of my palette there, and just dipping my brush in that to create that little shape there, working, keeping a little gap at the top and just dropping in some of that ruby red. You have complete control with watercolour and you can really take your time with it. It isn't something that needs to be rushed. Dropping in some of that lovely arancioni. Just taking that colour right to the tip and you can still see that lovely yellow tone underneath. Cleaning my brush, pattern it on the kitchen paper and just with that damp brush, blending that colour through into the existing yellow tone that we have. So you can still see that lovely yellow colour shining through. And again, I'm just working wet in wet. So we're going to be dropping in a little bit of this quinacridone red gold and just applying it over this side first. You'll notice that there's quite a strong highlight in the middle of this petal here where it curves around. So you want to try and keep out of that. So that's just why we have a little gap on the top. And then just cleaning my brush and blending it through. Make sure that when you clean your brush in your puddle of water, you pat it dry on your kitchen paper first. It is a particular method of application that I use and I have done a separate video on this, explaining in more detail, and I will link that on the top of your screen right now if you want to click through and watch that one after you've watched this video. So once again, we're working wet on wet. You can see me adding the water here. There's a little sort of vein in the middle of this section here. We want to keep out of that. So just dropping in the darker value right here. So I'm flitting between the ruby red and the quinacridone red gold on my palette so that you can see, um, it doesn't really matter which is which at this point. The important thing is as we hit the bottom part of this little um, element here, we stay out of that really strong highlight. And as we hit the base, we add a little bit more water so that the paint is more diluted. Dropping in some of that arancioni orange and blending it through, keeping out of that central vein. Now already you can see it's beginning to have that lovely orchid look. I'm adding some of the arancioni, so that's the orange tone, to the base. Once again, trying to maintain that highlight. And if you are finding value in this video, please consider hitting subscribe and that bell notification. And do consider giving us a thumbs up. We launch videos every single Tuesday and we are also over on Instagram at The Wonders of Watercolour. Do join us there. I just want to take a moment to tell you about our Patreon, which at the time of filming has four different membership levels, from mini weekly videos of doodles, vlogs and podcasts, to full-length botanical painting tutorials, which are exclusive to Patreon and are of course ad-free. If this is something that interests you, I've put a link in the description below, plus it's a way for you to support my channel. Okay, and back to the tutorial. Everything's now dry and I've mixed another really watery mix 
of the neutral tint and you can see how much water it is I've added to this particular puddle here and I'm just using my very fine brush to add a little bit of texture and detail to the upper part of the petal like this just working roughly from my uh, reference photograph here to make this petal have a little bit more dimension at the moment it's looking a bit flat so we need to add a little bit of shading here and there to make it look a little bit more real add a little bit more tonal variation and a slightly darker value but of course this paint is still really really watery notice how I'm using the tip of my brush this is actually I've switched down to my number two size spotter from Jackson's um, I always say this but just in case you're wondering why it's the number two This is quite an old brush now. I only use synthetic brushes these days, but this is one I've had for quite a while. And it's one of my sharper brushes. So I'm using this and you can see I'm taking that, um, that gray tone over some of that fig green that we applied later on, earlier on, just to give it some texture. But this is a number two size, but I think they've been really, um, it's, it probably, it's probably more like a number zero size spotter here. Spotters, if you're wondering, are very similar to round brushes but they have got a sort of shorter bristle which makes the paint application a lot easy so you can see me there adding some of that gray tone to that element there once everything's really really dry I'm mixing burnt umber this particular brand is by May Marie Blue um, but use whichever that you have you could use a Van Dyke brown now I must point out at this stage when I was painting this I realized that the photograph um, the stem had this kind of brownie tone but of course in real life we all know this is a really really dark green but I've decided to stay true to the photograph you could use something like a perilean green if you have that if you prefer to go true to life but I decided I wanted to um, just stick to what I was doing with the photograph and it's a little bit of artistic license and we all know how much I love that but please if you have the right color then go ahead and use that too so once I've applied that color wet on dry you can see how I've used my sort of blending technique and now I'm just pressing on the paper with my flat synthetic brush to push some of that pigment out so we have quite a lot of colors mixed on my palette here they're all the colors that I've used before so from the top at 12 o'clock ish we have quinacridone red gold and uh, next to that um, to the right is ruby red and of course we have the burnt umber and the other two colors are ruby red and ruby red with the perilean violet wet on wet you can see how I'm adding some detail here working around that central vein where that yellow tone is just adding a little more detail here and there using my number two size spotter for this because it gives me full control So this is now the Perilean Violet with a tiny bit of quinacridone red gold and I'm just using this to enhance some of the darker values that are in this part of the orchid like this. This is wet on dry but remember that the, the consistency of the paint really does matter at this point so you want it to be thick enough to be movable but not too dry so that it's a sort of too dry a wash. We want it to be kind of gloopy in texture cleaning my brush in my puddle that I have in the middle there and patted it dry on the kitchen paper before applying more paint as you can see me doing here. So just continuing this process using a kind of wiggly motion now where we have some texture and a little bit of detail on this lower part of the petal. This time using a kind of a stipple in motion if you like, just a wiggly motion with my brush and you can see where the lighter values are just using a very light touch here because we want it to look like the light is hitting this element of that petal so remember if you don't have these colors don't worry you can still join in with this tutorial but I did as I said at the start I had felt that um, I hadn't given them the love that they deserve because I haven't been using them but um, I really wanted to use them for this tutorial and they are wonderful paints if you've been lucky enough to obtain them in the past then um, I'm sure you'll really, really love them. 
If you have got a Gallo paints, let me know what you think of them. Drop it in the comments below. I'm really interested to know whether you love them as much as I do. So you can see I'm using this mixture of perylene violet with the quinacridone red gold. I mean, there's possibly a tiny bit of ruby red in there as well. This time I'm just sharpening up those little details and working around them with my number two size spotter just to give it a little bit more shape and a little bit more form. I'm also using this opportunity to add a little bit more veining on the petals as you can see here, roughly using my reference photograph as a guide. And just doing a really plain water glaze with the, this is, um, this is ruby red and just already now this is going over the arancioni wash that we've already done i felt that this needed strengthening up at this point you can see because i'm cleaning my brush patting it on the kitchen paper and blending it through how you can still see those lovely colors underneath and i'm doing the same process to the other elements here as you can see dropping in that ruby red like this staying out of that central vein Now that I have these little patterns in place with the um, perylene and violet, I'm just going over it now to enhance them because of course they need strengthening up with colour. So I'm just going over the, petal, the patterns that I've already created and you can see by adding the neutral tints over that fig green, how it's created the illusion of there being um, texture within that top petal. So now we know exactly where we're going. We can just go over those little dots like this and you can add one or two more. I haven't put all of them in, as you can see. I've just added um, just a few, just to give the suggestion of it. This is just for time purposes. Now I'm strengthening up the stem like this using the brown colour which maybe could be green and <laughs> just carrying on working through. This little photograph I took at my garden centre and I thought it would be a really cool thing to paint here on YouTube. Um, just going over the entire thing now with the um, Azo Yellow Gold just giving it um, a nice wash of that yellow colour and you can see me there just lifting out a little bit that I'd gone onto that highlight that I lost, taking it over the top part of these two petals because at the moment it's looking a little bit too white. So going back to the photograph, I took this at my garden centre, at a garden centre that I visited a few weeks ago and I cleaned up the photograph using um, Pixelmator app on my phone and cleaned up the photograph as you can see here which makes it really easy to paint. I always take the backgrounds out because it makes colour assessment really easy. This is something that we um, cover on our Patreon if it interests you. It's one of our tiers that we have over there. So in case you'd like to know how we clean up our photos then do head over to Patreon as I mentioned earlier on. Okay, so back to the job in hand. Um, everything's dry, so I'm using the Burnt Umber mix that I have on my palette here just to outline the base of this element here. At the moment it's too yellow and you can see from the photograph that some of it's in shadow, so I'm just applying this paint like this just to darken up that element of the plant, which makes it stand out from that bottom petal as you can see. And you can see I'm using my number five round brush here. And always blend it through with a clean, damp brush. I'm just lifting out this little bit here that I went outside the pencil line. This is my number two flat. And now I'm just adding a little bit of water here to these elements because we need to just drop in a bit more colour. So I'm mixing, uh, dropping in a mixture of ruby red and quinacridone red gold to just darken up this element here and add a little bit of detail. And you can see me mixing the colours there on my palette and dropping it down. 
I have mentioned this before, but this little palette, quite a few of you have asked me about it. It's I, ha I bought it from Jackson's. It's made by Etcher and it comes in a little tin with two palettes. This is one of them and the other one has a lot more wells. They're very, very tiny. Um, they're a little bit pricey, but actually perfect for me for filming because they are quite small and I can have all my colours on display. But again, if it interests you, I'll drop it in the um, description box underneath this video, along with all the other materials I'm using today. You can see me here just using the mixture of Ruby Red just to create a little bit more detail and also doing a wash over the top like this. So by wash, I mean I'm glazing over the existing colors with just a very, very watery mix of that color there and on the bottom. By the way, if you are struggling with the colors matching or with your own colors, let me know in the comments below the colors that you do have and maybe I can help you out. Just enhancing the base like this and at this stage it really is just a, a matter of continuing the process. You can see I've mixed another mix of neutral tint and I'm just adding a bit more detail here and there. We've still got a few minutes to go on this video so I'm going to just add a few more details here and there as you can see adding the grey tone in here and I'll be dropping in some of the perilean violet in a moment and adding some detail with the ruby red. But I'm going to stop talking and let you watch this in peace right until the end. Remember to stay until the end because I have given you the free line drawing um, right after this video, along with a playlist of other botanical painting tutorials that you may like to watch. So um, do click through and I'll see you there. Once you reach the line drawing at the end, do pause the video, take a screenshot and print it out and join in with us. So thank you so much for listening and watching this video and I'll see you soon. Remember we have new videos every single Tuesday.